coaches going to take a quick look at Saudi Arabia's defensive setup against Argentina today. Really, really impressive. The risk reward we always talk about on a defensive side, we usually talk about it in a press. But this was actually risk in a medium block, which gave Argentina and Messi maybe different pictures than they would have anticipated going into this game. And it led to Saudi Arabia winning the game 2-1. So let's take a look at what happened. And let's take a look at three things that I think jumped out from the defensive setup of Saudi Arabia. As always, if you enjoy it, please give it a like below and please subscribe so you don't miss any more. Okay, here we go. All right, so the first thing that jumped out is this was the general setup of Saudi Arabia against Argentina. Into that mid block, almost in a 4 1, 4 1, or 4 4 2 setup, but generally with a back four, but that high line of those back four players really really jumping out when you're watching it on the tv cam even you can see but shows you that that distance was probably about 15 20 yards which everyone knows is quite risky how did they do it here we go the first key was distance and body shape so when argentina defenders were in possession generally with time on the ball but it didn't look as if they would threaten that back line you can see the body shapes of the back four pretty square on now they did that because they needed to move from side to side they needed to pop into spaces as well which we'll talk about but ultimately, they needed to be able to see the game in front of them. When Argentina progressed the ball with the centre-back and it looked as if the vertical space would be a threat, then you could see the body shape changing from Saudi Arabia. That detail and the speed of that, very, very quick. It can change two or three times in about five or six seconds. And they were constantly changing, communicating and moving together as a unit. Really, really impressive. The next impressive phase of their defending was how they managed something that Argentina are absolutely brilliant at, dominating those inside channels with the players that they have and the personnel that they have, a big, big part of their combination play in the final third. How do you stop Argentina from doing that? Well, Saudi Arabia were very good. As soon as the ball was switched to a wide player, they got three to four players with pressure on the ball and players inside that first channel. So it stopped Argentina from having players that could twist, turn and create in those channels and maybe they had to go back around and maybe they opted for crosses on that occasion. But taking away that big threat from Argentina really, really took away a lot from their attacking game and again allowed Saudi Arabia an opportunity to get back in the game when they were a goal down. The last big key to Saudi Arabia's defensive masterclass for me, it was something, because you don't see medium blocks with such a high line without pressure on the ball so often, you don't see this picture a lot, and I thought this was fantastic. When you're playing against a back four and you've got a lot of possession on the ball, one way to break that back four down is typically by overloading them and then having balance with one defender running one way, someone checking off the line, so you can unbalance the back four. Saudi Arabia, though, because the distances were so tight between defenders and those midfielders, meant that when an Argentina player popped off the line, which would cause a lot of problems if that player received and turned, the centre-back was allowed to go with them, and the midfielder dropped in. So within, again, split seconds, they had kept their shape, they had reduced space, and they challenged Argentina to move the ball back around and find another option takes more time and with pressure of a World Cup game it means that it's more chances of frustration which allows then Saudi Arabia to grow into the game and get their opportunities. So there you have it probably the best game from the World Cup so far in terms of a tactical standpoint. Now would Argentina have expected that picture before the game? I would say not because it looks easy defensive line steps they would pop it over but you could see that it took them a while to get used to that there. And Argentina's game and the preparation, the scouting, would all be about the space in front of the back four or those interior channels that they limited. I think another interesting thing is when you look at the Opta analyst that showed the statistics from the game and the data and the breakdown, yeah, Argentina created a lot of chances. If you go and look at the chances like I did, you could see that there was quite a few of them. The runs were just off. And the split second here, split second there, goalkeeper stepped up. But looking at those runs, again, the detail with VAR, maybe that's part of the World Cup. Maybe that's a real advantage for defending is that if you get that detail right and you get that body shape right, 
those players can't get into those areas maybe as easy as they would have been in another World Cup where that flag might have stayed down. Really, really interesting game. I loved it. I can't wait to see what Argentina do in the next game and what the opposition do in the future games because you know, is that a way to beat them in a one-off? Is that their Achilles heel, so to speak? It's going to be interesting to see what happens. Thanks so much for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a like below. If the response is good, I'll keep these World Cup videos coming. Thanks so much for the support. I'll see you soon.